Hey guys, it's Savage, and welcome back to the channel. And we're up for a beautiful little evening flight today in the Beaver, because I need an excuse to fly it. But we are taking a trip across a couple of some new airports by Burning Blue Designs. And these were sent to me by them. Uh, one of them is Freeware, and that will be linked in the description below. That's the second one we're going to. But we're heading today from Katama Air Park, and we're heading over to Tradewinds, which is the Freeware one. And onwards to Wareham, which is just a stock airport, to end out somewhere nicer to visit. So let's go and take a look around here and see what we can see. Now this is available on the website as we've got oh, geese flying across the airport. That's going to be useful if you hit them, isn't it? So it's a small little New England airfield. It's on the same island as Martha's Vineyard. So it's on Martha's Vineyard. And it is nice to see more GA and small fields, especially in the northeast. You don't get a lot of them. And it is nice to have something a little different. This is £10 on their website, so really, really reasonably priced, to be honest. Animated people, expected these days. A big hangar for you to use for yourself. Restaurant area, some static aircraft that are actually decent models. This makes me think we might be getting a... Uh... Actually, that does, does make me... No, okay, so it's a pretty low poly model, but... It looks like it's been poly crunched. It looks detailed enough that it might be... Hmm... A Citabra. Citabria. I want one of those. Oh, let's slow this down. The Katama Kitchen. Hmm, detailed. Do we actually have an interior to this? Ah, this is nice. It's a nice little nuance to fly to some airports in, in the MSFS that we get this level of uh, of detail. I think it's quite a nice change. We've got a farm over there. Housing. And we've got the runways. We've got a 3,000 foot and a 2,500 foot. So, yeah, uh, this is our 3,500, 21. Then we have 17 over there, which is 2,500. So we're going to get ourselves fired up, head over to Trade Winds, and see what we can see. So I best leave my controller handy so I can use it again. Okay, so let's kick the beaver to life. Make sure everything is operacional. Crack the throttle. Let's get rid of this for a second. We'll do a very quick start up here. See where I get the oil cap correctly. Uh fuel tanks to on booster pumps on oh, power's on make sure our parking brake is set it is okay we are good so let's give this a crank make sure the mags are off I love it when you hit the controller button wrong and it starts moving the look around. Okay, starter is good to go. And we have a good start. Okie dokie. Okay, let's get this rocking and rolling. Let's get ourselves out of here. Beautiful New England sunset. I've not done a flight at this time of day before on video, so we'll see how this goes. It might end up looking like total crap in the video, so we'll have to see what we can do. But it's quite pretty. I can't see where I'm going. Okay, down this end. Get rid of the tablet as well. Okay, there's our markings. We'll get ourselves out of here. Might be an excuse to put some night lighting on as well, which would be nice. Get ourselves rolling here. Nice grass field. Oh, a little bit of sachet, that's my fault. And we are up and away. That's a lovely sunset, I must say. Martha's Vineyard is just behind us, it's only a couple of minutes away. It's not a big island. But uh, we have trade winds to the north. We'll be heading past uh, Edgartown, which is where we are now. 
past Oak Blue and to Trade Winds, which is at Vineyard Heaven. Some gorgeous names on this island. There we go. Some pretty strong reflections right now, but look at that gorgeous orange sky and cloud. Looks really pretty. Once we get ourselves stabilized on course, it'll be an excuse to actually uh, turn some lighting on the cockpit here. There we go. So see the field down below is uh, over here. Not a big place, but quite a nice one all the same. I like it as an airport goes. And if you think of it, it's basically a two-pack with trade winds free, which we're going to pop into in a second. It's uh, quite a nice little difference. Sure, lighting's all set and on. I'm trying to remember where the panel light switches are because I don't do a lot of flying at night. That is a bit much, I think. That's more like it. That gives us exactly what we want. Okay, so come around on course here. It shouldn't be too long for us to get there. It should be just up the coast here. And we'll get to explore that. Now, you guys will get to see a video with me looking at the TDS uh, GTN 750 NXI soon. Uh, because that is coming along very shortly. I, um, I've just got a copy of that and I'll be taking a look at it. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, even though it does use the Garmin Trainer, of course, in their uh, database and stuff. It's still pretty darn useful. I wonder if it pops up with this. I don't think it has a TD pop-up option. I may be wrong, though. Yeah, probably wrong. Either way, we'll get ourselves over here. Make sure our power is where we want it to be. Just bring that back a smidgen. Now, our flaps are still down at takeoff setting. We'll pull those back up again. Too much talking, not enough paying attention to the flight. But now, uh, the northeast is an area that's well, I say pretty flat. Flat compared to British Columbia. And it's never going to fly in a lot. But relish the opportunity to when I can. One of my good pilot friends uh, is actually from the Massachusetts area. And obviously moved out to the West Coast now. I believe still doing survey work. But it's, uh, it's a place I always heard stories about in his flying. So it was always really nice to actually see the place properly as I plug my headphones in. So I don't freeze the screen. Oh boy, the okay, that was different. Who knew plugging your headphones in so they don't battery doesn't die in flight? We'll do that to you. <laughs> okay, so we're not too far away. We're looking almost at the headland over here for it. Pull some power out here and hopefully be good. Just across the bay there should be Vineyard Heaven. We'll have to drop down here and go we'll see where we're going because this is bordering on dusk, so visualizing anything on the ground is going to be pretty hard. Unless you know what you're looking for. And I don't because I've never been here before. I'm guessing it's that down below me. I think it is, in fact. So we'll circle down and land from the north. Should be on the downwind here. Yeah, there we are. Let's turn these down a touch. A little intense for us right now. Yeah, that's going to be us over there. So we'll hit the downwind and we'll stop, turn around and get ourselves off the ground again. And head on towards Wareham. So obviously if you have got Burning Blues, Martha's Vineyard as well, that's three airports on one little island. Which is quite a nice combination to be honest. Okay, we're looking good there. Plus, I just need an excuse to fly the Beaver. It's a plane I don't get to fly as often as I'd like to. I have to fly other types of aircraft when it comes to these videos, otherwise you guys will get bored real fast. Okay, it's got a visual. Coming over the town. 
I'm a little bit low down, but I am having difficulty keeping visual on the airport because it is not lit. It's uh, dusk and I don't know where I'm flying. It's not an area I'm familiar with, so I'm not too used to my directions and landmarks. So I'm needing to maintain a little bit better visual reference as it gets quite dark here. This is going to be interesting judging distance in this kind of light conditions. The sky is uh, sun setting much quicker than I thought it would. There's trees in the foreground I can see there. Keep the nose up here so we get across them. I can just about see their shadow. You probably can't see it because of YouTube's compression. It's getting very dark down there. There we go. Flaps up. And we are down. A little bit of a tail bounce when it puts down there, but not the thing we can't manage. It's going to sort of spin around here. Yeah, those trees were something to keep an eye out for on approach. We'll uh, get down to the start of the runway, get ourselves ready to depart, and we'll take a quick look at it. In fact, you know what? This is hard to even look at an airport, so we'll set the time a little bit earlier, because I haven't realised just how quickly it's getting dark out here with the winter months. So we'll make our lives a little bit easier and have a nice kind of sunset flight in slightly more visual conditions than we're in right now. Because it's not much of a video if you can't see anything. And I'm well aware YouTube compression will be a hog. Okay, let's put the parking brake on here. Let's, uh, let's make time a little bit more forgiving, shall we? You know what? Four o'clock, that'll do. It'll be pretty enough. Okay, as my camera angle is very strange right now. So this is trade winds. This is free, and I'll turn my head off so it doesn't get quite as weird. We've got two runways. We have a 2100, which is what we landed on, and we have a 1400, which is this one. Interesting runway marker there. Oh, that's actually the uh, the wind sock of source. There we go. That's one method to use. Fly over here as quickly as we can. Now this is the freeware airport, so this is completely free. There we go. So we've got more static aircraft, Cubs, Tabrias. It's nice to see the houses across the road as well. That's a nice little touch. Little hangar here. A square body Ford. Or it could be a Chevrolet C10. Can't tell. I think that's a Chevy. Someone's going to be offended no matter what I do. I've either got it wrong or got it right. This little hangar's gorgeous. I love it. I especially like the fact the street is here. Like, fully modelled in with the houses. For a reasonable distance out of the road. And you have actual domestic houses along the, run the road here next to the runway. It really adds to that this airfield is in the middle of a residential area feel to it, you know? A little slice of Americana modelled into this airfield. And this is free, so that's not bad at all. If you go the road all the way down to there, and into town there. So Oak Bluffs, they've got the hangars here. One there. Now I do know what this is, that's a VW Beetle. You know, it's higher poly than one of those aircraft. I want to say that's a beach, but I don't think it is. Huh. I want to say it's a beach, but it might well be a piper. I mean, I think that's a piper with a wing shape. It doesn't quite remind me. It reminds me of it, but it's also not reminding me of it. It looks like an arrow or an archer, but it also doesn't. I don't know. See, that's, that's a piper. That's obvious. 
It's such a reasonably nice 3D model. Huh. A 172 there with burning blue uh, designs on it. <laughs> nice. Now, Burning Blue are doing quite a lot of UK airfields as well. And I like the fact they're doing New England too, because it's an area that hasn't really seen a ton of love in the sim. So it is great to actually uh, see that happen. Look at ourselves Ooh, back over here towards our waiting aircraft. And we'll get ourselves back in the air. So parking brake off. And we'll head on to where I'm now. Three notches of flap for departure. And we'll try something a little different this time. Uh, keep the tail up. There we go. Nearly stuck the prop in the ground. And we're away. Nose down. Flaps up. Useful if I switch my head back on, right? And we're up and away. Pull that power out a little bit. And the prop. We don't overstress the engine. And we are golden. And we can see so much more. It's still feeling like we're about to hit sunset. So we're good. But we can at least see a little bit more. Let's go quickly outside here. It's a nice little spot there. Obviously, when you can see where you're going, it's a really decent area. You can visualize a lot of things better. But I just like the fact the road's there. Obviously, it's sad that it kind of blends into that, but it is what it is. And that's free. I think free is a damn good price for that. And given that it's £10 for the other one, two airports for the price for £10, that's a very good price. Uh, both available from the website. I will link that in the description, of course. I did get sent those by Burning Blue. Uh, they sent me Martha's Vineyard a while ago. And I really like what they do. They make some really inexpensive, nice scenery uh, for areas that really don't tend to see a lot of love, which is always nice. Okay, so across here, we should be hitting tea ticket Just over the coast. And from tea ticket we fly up past West Falmouth North Falmouth and onto Wareham. There we go. Trim her out a little bit. Let her settle into a good rhythm. And then we'll just set the power to where we want to keep the pitch trim. A little bit off on the power. And we'll drop our nose down and settle into that trim. One more notch down because it's starting to try and raise its nose. I keep forgetting I have a trim wheel on the side of my uh, Bravo Quadrant. Always forget that. Much more accurate and nuanced trim. long been a user of a uh, trim buttons on my yoke just because of convenience and practicality never had a trim wheel before this so it's nice to be able to go back to using a trim wheel okay we're popping along at a decent clip and we're on course here this will be tea ticket down below us up here on the New England coast great place to fly a seaplane I really wish them to make some New England seaplane bases and uh, water ports that would be a fantastic one in fact there's about six or seven of them i counted on the map just as i was plotting the flight so plenty of opportunities to really do something interesting and we'll be yeah, maybe just under 10 minutes to get there to where I'm. and that's a 900 foot dirt strip which is running uh, 0119 direction so basically north south okay so this is tea ticket down below us great name as well some fantastic names in this part of the world i do enjoy them nice to be able to a little bit see a bit of the ground this is why i don't do night flights for videos because youtube compression turns it into pitch blackness and you can't see anything which is boring for the user in fact let's go out and see something 
people always hate the fact I don't go outside much in my videos. We could change that, especially seeing us panning and tilting is smooth now with uh, my mega computer. A little harbour down there. The baseball field, classic America. Probably a high school actually there, because that looks like a playing field and baseball diamond, so that is most likely a high school, I'm gonna guess. Apparently there's a quarry in the middle of town. Or at least something. So much water. I love it. That coastline's beautiful. Do I have the flickers on? I did. We should keep them on as it's technically about 10,000 feet and it is dusk. This sim still blows me away, and that's, I, I don't know, I, even to this day, people say, why don't you fly X plane, because of visions like this. I get to go and see places I've never seen before, and experience them in a whole new way, and for all its faults, it gives us that. Such a beautiful view of this part of the world that I just couldn't see otherwise. So nice. Even if we are flying through a cloud right now. And we're climbing again. Let's put our nose back down. So we're off course a little bit. We'll turn here. Up towards West Falmouth. Trying my best not to fly the trim wheel bad habit but apparently she wants to be constantly bobbing up and down that is something I've noticed in the sim sim aircraft do tend to trim a lot harder than real aircraft do it's it's so hard to get a finely tuned kind of level often in the sim whereas in real life it's much easier to do so it should just be at the very top over here is where we're actually heading to we'll head back on track and we'll turn so West Falmouth is down there below us, and North Falmouth, surprisingly enough, is just above it. And then we head on to Wareham, or just outside Wareham. And now I can say in my preliminary explorations of the TDS uh, GTN, the sound is a nice feature. The PMS is always very quiet, whereas the PMS, it talks to you. So the, the TDS talks to you a lot. Um, it's interesting and the smart glide feature is actually pretty good it's not obviously something to rely on it's an assistant but let's get a look at this cloud actually do you want to be flying through that if we can help it it is after all January it's going to be pretty cold pull our power back here down under the cloud I really feel like I should be on floats. This feels so wrong. I really feel like I should be on floats here. I feel like I'm missing a trick. God, that's beautiful. <laughs> Put some coal back on. Now we're going to have a really tricky time finding this little place because it's going to be nestled in the trees. And it'll look a lot like a road. So I'm going to want to borrow a whole magenta line for this and trust it as much as we can try and find the little place never been here before in my entire life so we will have to find out what we're going to experience together I used to pull the flaps up this time that's a start right now the beaver has been a fast favourite of mine since we got it and especially with the Got Friends pack, it's become a really cool aircraft. If you've not tried out the DC-3 Realism mod, by the way, from Ducksworth, go get it, because that adds a whole extra level of realism and complexity to the aircraft that makes it so good. You will love it. Really improves the aircraft. 
makes it an instant keeper. I'm even I'm happy to assume we got two keepers from the 40th anniversary updates, the Beaver and the DC3. The rest, eh. There's some okay ones, but those are the two superstars, honestly. I know Carinado's got their Archer on the lineup as well for the very near future, and we also have the uh, Avionics update coming soon, so there's going to be a lot of happening for the sim in this new year, especially as developers are now starting to get away from that Christmas break and finish things off. We have an M7 Mall coming. We have some offerings from a uh, multitude of the developers. Hopefully we'll see something from Rate Away this year, and there's a good chance we'll see something from Simworks, and there's a couple in the pipeline there and a couple of other developers we should see aircraft from. I'm excited to see what we get though as a surprise because there's always somebody that does something unusual and I'm excited to find out what we get. I hope this is the year we get more normal aircraft because we've had some wacko ones this last year, two years. Every developer is pulling out the stops to release their strangest fantasy aircraft or niche favourites that they want to put out. Give me some classics please Give me a good 182 that's not the tractor from Carinado. Hey, give me an RG. Even a 172 RG or a Cutlass. Give me a 206 or a 207. Give me a float caravan. Give me an Norseman. That'd be cool. But it's not that regular. It's more of a niche. I do want to see a C123 or a C119. Those are two favourites of mine. From uh, yesteryear. Obviously we've got the 175, hopefully we'll see uh, some turboprop regionals. I'd like to see a 1900. I would like to see a uh, Brasilia. Let's have some turboprop regionals. ATR cancelled, very sad, but hopefully we'll see some other aircraft in that niche. I know we're possibly looking at a Blackbird, uh, Blackbird's Baron. I know that was talked about. That is one I will totally fly. Alright, we're coming up on the airfield now. We're going to have to try and find it. See if you can spot it before me. Because that would be a great help. The lights in the distance over there are not our field. That is a regional airport we're not going to. We're going to the sticks here. Now this swampy wet area in front of us is looking like the right spot for us. Let's try and find out where we're going. But let's just have a look outside first. It's so much brighter out here. Look at that sunset. Lovely. This is perfect float plane territory. Why am I going wheels? Oh wait, because I had to go to three wheel kind of ground airports. I hate myself sometimes. So it's off to our left here somewhere. And I can't see it. Nose is dropping. So we're 2.4 nautical miles away. And I'm not expecting to get a lot of visual on this place until we're right on top of it. So let's hope we see something soon. Where are you? Got the lakes down here, that's what we're looking for. Off our left wing coming up soon. Where are you? Little airfield, where are you? It's in here somewhere. I just don't know where that somewhere is. I'm getting quite low here so I can see what I'm doing. Should nearly be here. We're nearly parallel with it. It's off to our left. Where are you? I picked a real cork of an airfield we can't find. Possibly in this wooded section here. can't quite tell. We'll find out as we cross it, I think. I 
The lighting is terrible for trying to find an airfield. Something around to our side, maybe. Where are you? That looks like it down there, or the lead into it. I just can't tell. That's it, I think. Right there. And the clouds right in my vision. Yep, that's us. Right down there. Okay. This isn't going to be tricky at all. Okay. Okay. We can make this happen. Alright, we'll circle back out this way. I'm not going to bother with a pattern here because it's the kind of place where unless you're there, there's no one there. Power back at some flaps in whilst we're turning. So I need to spend a while working out where I am again. Find ourselves in the correct heading. Ponds to the left of the runway. Remember that. Ponds to the left. There's the ponds. There's a strip. Okay. So, for landing. This is one of those times where I'm going to want full flaps to help myself break a little bit here. Maintaining my airspeed whilst dropping off. We've got 900 feet to work with here, so we're not going to have a ton. I'm going to want to round this out when we touch down. Burn some speed over the trees here. Little power, we're coming in short. Trees in the foreground, so it's going to be a really kind of dive it in after we get across these trees. Flaps up, brakes on. And we are down. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. A little bit, but we put her in firmly and certainly. We had some runway to deal with over there, but not a ton. There appears to be the hangar over there. Whew, that was uh, positive. Note I pull the flaps up when I'm touching down short. Uh, works better when you've got manual flaps because you can do it very quickly. But uh, the flaps are creating lift. Lift takes weight off the wheels and therefore helps with lift, obviously. When you take weight off the wheels, that means you are not having effective braking because your wheels are lighter, the aircraft's lighter. It will stop easier. It, will stop, it won't stop as easily. Uh, a wheel with infinite weight on it will grip. The more grip we have, the more the braking will actually slow us down. So we really want to have as much weight as possible. So we pull the flaps up to touch down giving us the most opportunity as I'm on the wrong camera and this one's upside down for reasons unknown to science full size airfield truck at a uh, standard oh never change flight sim vehicles and full size fuel trucks at a tiny little field like this so this is what we had to work with we had the trees here which do get a lot smaller Probably could have been lower, to be honest. I was expecting the trees to be taller. It came in a little bit too high, I think. Because it was hard to see where the shrubbery was. Coming down here. Landing. And we theoretically have rollout here, but not really. This is getting into the weeds a little bit, I think, at this point. But I think we did a pretty reasonable job of that one. Making it in, in um, eh, what is probably categorically half the distance. But we did it. And granted, I should have probably stuck to the bits between the fields there. But hey, it works. I don't get the impression this place is used very often. This would probably be a great place to actually redo as a scenery. But I digress. Anyway, as the sun will set over us here in Massachusetts, 
thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time go check out those two airports from burning blue i really like those and i love finding this part of the world happy flights folks bye